Well, thanks for having me and thanks for uh, joining me today. Uh, so today I'm gonna take you on a journey that we went on, went on last year when we fully embraced the freemium model with one of our products, uh, B Pro. Uh, but before we do that, let's talk about this free thing a little bit. How many of you have picked up merchandising here or plan to pick up something? I raise your hand if you're planning to pick up uh, some, some products. Uh, all right, a bunch of you. What if that same product was uh, 50 cents? Would you still pick it up? Probably not. Uh, most people wouldn't. And if it were 25 cents, still probably the same thing. And it's not about the 50 cents or the 25 cents, right? When there's a line outside the door uh, at the ice cream shop, it's not really about the $6 that you're saving. There's something else there going on. And economists have been looking into this for a long, long time. So for example, about 15 years ago or so, at MIT, there was a group of researchers that decided to do a bunch of research in, in this area. One of the uh, uh, experiments that they did was to offer a group of people two chocolates, a Ferrero Rocher for 26 cents, and at Hershey's for one cent. And about 40% of people chose uh, the Ferrero Rocher, about 40% the Hershey's, and about 20% they didn't take any chocolate. Then with another group of people, they raised the price by one cent. So now the Ferrero Rocher was 27 cents, the Hershey's two cents, and people pretty much chose the chocolates with the same uh, percentage. Then with a third group of people, they decided to reduce the original price by one cent. So now you have the Ferrero Rocher, 25 cents, the Hershey's free, and what happened? 90% of people chose the Hershey's. 0% not chocolate, 10% the Ferrero Rocher. Now we're talking about 25 cents. It's not the end of the world, right? There's something else there. Now, if there is something else there, then it's good for us to keep that in mind as we look at our own pricing strategies and what we do uh, with potentially a free product. So let's dive into that. Uh, first of all, my name is Massimo Arrigoni. I'm with a company called B. We develop uh, visual builders that people use to uh, design emails, landing pages, and pop-ups. Last month, uh, they were used over eight million times. And that happens uh, within uh, applications that have embedded our builder. There's hundreds of them, like Iterable, Braze, uh, Service Titan, Freshworks, many, many that you might be using. Or you can go to befree.io and use our software there. Uh, it's an email and landing page design suite. Just to give you an idea of where we are as a company, uh, about 80 people and we passed 10 million in ARR last year. So why switching to a free product uh, with our B Pro product? So the B Pro product, again, is the email design suite. Things that were actually going okay with B Pro, we were doing around 10,000 free trials a month and people were pretty happy uh, with it, over 15 NPS uh, normally. But there were two things that were kind of bugging us. One was the product-led growth aspect of it, and another one, churn. So let's dive into both. On the product-led side of things, we've always been a product-led company. So since the moment we put up on the web at bfree.io the first version of our visual builder, people have been able to click twice and get into the builder right away. So it's always been a, a, a PLG motion, but if you wanted to then save your email and design it later, et cetera, you had to sign up for a free trial. And that didn't really sit well with us. It's a, at the core of PLG, there is the idea that the product is gonna be one of your main drivers of acquisition, expansion, retention, et cetera. And so the shorter the path between that value that you've created and the people that experience that value, the better things are gonna be. Now, when you put a free trial there, there's a little bit of friction there. What if I run out of time? What if the free trial then asks me for a credit card, etc.? So we wanted to further remove that uh, aspect. And so let's go back to our researchers at MIT and talk about why there is, there is friction there. Um, another test that they did was they offered a group of people two Amazon gift cards. Either you could get your $10 gift card right away, or you could pay $7 and get a $20 gift card. Pretty much everybody took the $10 gift card and left. A second group of people were also offered two Amazon gift cards, a $10 gift card, 
for $1 and a $20 gift card for $8. And 64% of people actually did the math correctly this time and moved to the $20 gift card, right? There is something there about this zero price that triggers all kinds of different behaviors in people. And so when you are a PLG company and you're all about removing friction and re reducing the, the distance uh, between your product and your users, if a free uh, price helps you reduce that distance by removing barriers and affecting consumer behavior in the way, for example, it was shown in those experiments, well then it's worth looking into. The other thing that was uh, bugging us was churn. So the absence of a free plan triggered a pretty good amount of churn on the most infrequent users of our product. And it was around 5% in 2021 when we were looking at this. We had uh, around 10,000 paying customers. So seeing 500 paying customers leave every month, it's just a depressing thought. <laughs> you know, it's, just a, it's not a fun thing to see. Now, when we looked at the churn, they weren't pissed off. It's just that they were done. They, they had gotten the job done, right? They, they had designed a new email with our platform, and no, they were not interested in a subscription. They, they were infrequent users, and so they would cancel. So um, over 65% of the people that churn, churn precisely for that reason. And so we said, okay, that combining these two things, let's try a real freemium model. And when I say try, actually that's not true because it's really hard to try uh, a switch to freemium. It's a lot of work. There's a lot of things that you need to do on the product side, on the marketing side, on the sales side. So honestly, uh, in our case, we did a, about two months of research before pulling the trigger because actually when you go in that direction, it's pretty hard to go back and you know, it's not just a simple experiment. What we did was we dedicated Q1 of 2022 to doing uh, things in the, in the product, in the, in the marketing, et cetera, and then we launched at the end of March. What we did basically was removing the lowest tier in our pricing and, and replaced it with a free product and then kept what was the second tier, which was $30 a month. So, of course, we communicated this extensively in those three months, you know, in all kinds of ways. And this is, for example, an example of one of the emails that were sent to people to explain why we we're doing it, et cetera, et cetera. What happened when we went live? Well, one thing that we were kind of uh, worried about was are we going to cannibalize revenue? Like a ton of people that are going to say, hey, thank you so much for this free plan. I'm switching down to the free plan. So revenue expansion was not a goal but potentially cannibalizing revenue was a, was a fear. Uh, luckily that did not happen. And what happened actually was uh, a somewhat modest increase in the MRR. So as people, uh, some people switched down to the free plan, most people stayed uh, um, and uh, saw their payment go from 15 to $30 a month. And so that triggered some MRR change. We had some churn when uh, a, a grace period of three months ended but it wasn't substantial. And then some churn left for the following months. Uh, but again, a net MRR increase of 13%, so not, not too bad. One of the reasons why we did this was really to double down on our PLG motion, right? And get people into the product, uh, uh, more people into the product. And on that side, it did help. So the minute we switched our website from uh, sign up for a free trial to sign up free, we saw a tremendous amount of uh, new signups. So almost 60% off the gate, probably because there was, had been a bunch of marketing that, that boosted that initial uh, demand, but it, ke it kept at over 50% higher than the levels before. So instead of doing 10,000 free trials a month, we now do consistently 15,000 new signups per month. So again, those researchers at MIT we're onto something. There is something about free that triggers an overreaction. Just like people overreacted to the free chocolate, people actually overreact to your offering a free plan if that makes sense for, for your business. The other thing that we were worried about was churn, and so what happened to churn? Uh, we did see 
a nice decrease in churn. So this happened over time, as you can see, and it's gradually, but it's still, still happening as fewer and fewer infrequent users upgrade from the free plan, they just stay on the free plan. Therefore, over time, you just have less churn on your paid plan. How about active users? So, okay, more people using the application, but are these all like really infrequent users that just use it once and then never use it again? No, actually, we had a strong increase also in the amount of users. So by using the free plan, the triggers that overreaction, the initial overreaction, then if you're doing things right with the rest of your team, you can actually turn those into real users of your application. And uh, there was a nice increase also in high frequency users of the application. This is the way our product analytics suite defines high frequency, which is over 13 days out of 30. So pretty high frequency users of the application. As you can see, 30% increase on, on those users. And that's a big jump compared to the way we were growing monthly active users before embracing freemium, okay? We went from 17% to over 50 of all users and 37% of high frequency users. So uh, message there, the impact of free has nice side effects uh, also in just overall usage of the product. What happened then to the sales motion? You have more people that come in but then uh, what should you do with them? More and more people, the funnel gets bigger as you go free because of that initial overreaction. So should you now overreact uh, to that yourself and just throw a bunch of people at this bigger funnel? And what we've found is no, that doesn't work. In fact, uh, product-led sales, I joke that we could rename it in patience-led sales because um, these are the things that we found. First, when you see a big logo come in, again, bigger funnel, so bigger logos that come in, people get excited. That doesn't mean that there's an opportunity there. Big logo does not mean big opportunity. Now, big logo with strong increasing usage, yes, there's something there. Um, but that takes time. Increasing usage normally happens over time. Uh, just recently, for example, we had a sales assisted uh, win they had actually started using the product eight months ago. That's a lot of time. That takes a lot of patience. Um, and when you engage, this is a heavy user of the product. They probably know more about the product than you do. So how you engage as a, as a sales team is super important and our team has worked uh, really hard on changing the way they engage so that really they are curious consultants. They ask a bunch of questions. And so let's double down on that a little bit. What did we change uh, over the last year as we learned how this stuff uh, works the best? And by the way, we're still very much learning and I'm happy to share you know, more of that. Um, if, if you have time to come to the booth today, I'm gonna be here today and tomorrow. But these are the things that we've already learned and changed uh, and acted on. So we changed the system that we used to uh, score leads um, so that we use a system that has a combination of first party data and third party data. So data from your CRM, product analytics, et cetera, et cetera, and then adds on some third party data, who is this company, et cetera. And that helps us create a better uh, scoring mechanism. So now the salespeople work on that list, okay? Um, that, by the way, has allowed the team to double their number of calls. So it's worked out pretty well. And then again, when they do engage, different approach. So it's a really consultative sales approach. Uh, they're consultants, they're there to help, they're there to listen. And the beautiful thing about this is that as they ask a ton of questions and they just listen, it's a fantastic amount of uh, feedback for the product team, of course. And then um, what happens afterwards? So we're starting to invest more in, uh, again, that, that consultancy service uh, that helps people become even better user, stronger user of the product after they actually engage with the sales team. For example, there was an initiative by our team to just have them fill the seats that they've already bought uh, because I, we know that that's gonna trigger good, uh, good reactions down the, down the road. So far, what we've seen, the numbers are small. So when we switched to freemium, really we were switching to an idea that we, yes, we were gonna have some uh, 
uh, recurring revenues based on self-service, but we would see an increase in these companies, larger companies, uh, that we can assist through sales and turn into larger contracts. And as you can see, we started really low. The numbers are getting bigger, but you can see also it's not a huge spike at the beginning. It's pretty gradual, it just takes time. It takes time for these larger companies to really become heavier users of your product and then raising that hand and asking for that additional uh, level of service that you might, you might want to provide. And the other thing that we've found so far, even the size of the contract, it just takes time for that to become a real enterprise contract. It doesn't mean that you don't need to engage at some point, but keep in mind in terms of cost that you're probably talking about a four digit contract. It's gonna take a while for that to become a five or even a six digit contract. So key, key takeaways, um, again, there's something about free that causes an overreaction in all of us, and we can take advantage of that in some of our pricing strategies if it makes sense for the business that you're in. I don't think that this can really be an experiment, so be, be cautious, really think about it, because it's a ton of work to fully embrace a freemium model and it touches every aspect of your organization. It's not a quick experiment, or at least that is my, my opinion. And then finally, if sales gets involved, just make sure that you understand that it's really about patience. It takes time. It takes time to figure out when to engage. It takes time to figure out the models that will surface, the companies that you should engage with. And even once you do engage, you're just there, first of all, listening and understanding how you can be helpful. And so it might take quite some time for that portion of a freemium strategy to really kick in. So that's what we've uh, uh, learned so far. And again, very happy to share more learnings if you have time come and see us uh, at the booth. Um, I think we're out of time for a question, but yeah, please come see me. And thanks so much for listening today.